Hello everyone and welcome to today's NNS Explained episode. This one is an episode that I'm personally really excited about. How to stake ICP on the NNS. If you want to learn more about how the NNS works on a high level or how to get ICP on the NNS, then you can watch some of our previous episodes where Laura and I walk you through exactly this. But in today's episode, we're going to be staking. And before that, let me say, and let me emphasize from the previous episode, how important it is to create a seed phrase for your internet identity and to save it very well. And how you store your seed phrase should satisfy two properties. One is you know where it is. You never forget where it is. You don't be like, which book was it again? So put it somewhere where you know where it is and you will not forget and put it somewhere where where others cannot find it because if someone finds a seed phrase they have they will have complete access to your account including your nns account that may or may not contain icp in the future don't put it on your dining table basically so before we start um, and before we start the practical part of this episode about how to stake on the nns i want to talk about why you would stake on the nns so I can think of three good reasons why you might want to stake on ICP on the NNS. One is it allows you to participate in the computer's governance system that is the NNS. It allows you to vote on proposals as well as create proposals. And we'll have more videos on how to verify proposals. Uh, we already uploaded a few, but we will have many more uh, in the future. The second reason is that staking ICP will give you voting rewards. So as you participate in governance and you vote on proposals, you're going to be accruing voting rewards. And I will talk more about voting rewards just in just a second. And the third, and maybe the most important reason, having an eight-year neuron gives you official bragging rights in the ICP ecosystem. You will be part of the eight-year gang. So these are three reasons why you would want to stake. And today, let me explain you how you can stake ICP on the NNS. This is my NNS account, I'm already logged in. And if you followed one of the previous episodes, then you should already have this 1.1 ICP in your, in your NNS account. I will go to Neuron Staking here. To start staking, click Stake ICP. And right now I only have one sub account, so I'll just pick main and stake one ICP. This will create a Neuron. Um, and the following steps will allow me to set up a few things about this neuron. And I will explain each step as we go along. Here we go. So first step, setting a dissolve delay. And before we do that, what is a dissolve delay? You can think of a dissolve delay as kind of a timer. So a timer on your phone would be analogous. Let's say if I set my timer to 10 minutes and I just leave it as is, what will happen? Of course, if you don't click start, the timer will not start going down, but you just set the timer to 10 minutes. It's a bit like that when you set your dissolve delay. It's setting a time for how long your ICP neuron will be locked for. Let's say I'm gonna set uh, one year. It's important to mention that the longer you set your dissolve delay, the more voting power you have, and therefore the more voting rewards you will, you will accrue. And the reason for that is this, the design of the NNS was such that if participants of the governance system lock their ICP longer, they have a bigger say in how the system should be governed. Because you're, if you commit yourself to the maximum, that is eight years, then you're more committed to the long-term success of the internet computer. But for now, I'll just do one year quickly and set delay. Again, this sets the time for how long my ICP is locked for, but it doesn't mean that it unlocks in one year. It just means it's locked for a year. And I'll show you how to start the timer in just a second. And now we are in this step, follow neurons. Laura talked about how following works in a previous episode. So please watch that if you want to learn more. Today, I will go through the practical part. Proposals are categorized in different topics and you can set which neuron you want to follow for each, each uh, topic separately. However, there is this catch-all on the top that says follow all except governance and SNS and neuron fund. And this means I can follow a neuron here. Let's say for simplicity, simplicity's sake, I will follow the Definitive Foundation, which is where I work. 
However, you should go through all the options and see which ones align with how you would want to vote. One good place to see uh, more information about all of these neurons that you can follow is at vpgeek. If you go to vpgeek.app, you will arrive here. This is a DAP built on ICP that shows a lot of information about different neurons and, and, about, uh, and about governance on ICP in general. So you go to neurons, you can click all known neurons, and in the known neuron sections, I see all the neurons that were on the list in the NNS tab, and you can see their voting participation rate. And if you click on them, you can see how they vote in general. So this is a nice place if you want to pick something other than the definitive foundation. And if I close this window now, then my neuron may not vote on all proposals it's because governance and SNS topics are excluded from this catch-all. So it's neatly organized. These are the next two that I can click following. And for this, I will follow someone else. Let's see. I see that Geek Factory votes on all proposals. So that's nice. To read Geek Factory here. To reiterate, you will only get voting rewards if you vote on proposals, which means missing votes on different proposals will not grant you voting rewards. And I'll do the same with SNS and Neurons Fund. And now my neuron is completely set up. So here I have my NNS neuron with one ICP stake, zero maturity, we'll come back to that in a minute and the one year timer or the one year dissolve delay. So if we open up this neuron, it shows more information about how the voting power is calculated and some of the actions that you can do with this neuron. So one of these actions are you can increase the stake. Of course, this is just a demonstration. That's why I have one ICP, but you're welcome to increase the stake. You can also start dissolving and start dissolving is equivalent of to clicking the start button for starting the timer. So if I click start dissolving here, it will start this timer and my dissolve delay will decrease one day every day, which means in a year, this neuron will be unlocked and I will get back my ICP. But if I click stop dissolving, you can start and stop dissolving anytime you want the same way you can start and stop the timer anytime you want. One thing you cannot do, you cannot decrease the dissolve delay of a neuron. You can always increase it. So here, now it's one, one year, but I can increase it to two years up to a maximum of eight years. And why would I keep this neuron locked instead of starting the timer? And this is where age bonus comes in. The longer you keep your ICP locked, the more age bonus it accrues which means you will have more voting power, your vote will count more in the NNS proposals, and therefore you will also get more, more voting rewards. Voting rewards or vote and voting power are calculated based on these three numbers. One is how long the dissolve delay is, the longer the more voting power, how long your age bonus is or how large your age bonus is, the larger the better and it has a maximum value of 1.25 as a multiplier and how much ICP you have staked. Voting rewards come in the form of maturity. Maturity is a property of a neuron and once maturity reaches at least one, once available maturity reaches at least one, you can spawn a neuron which will in a week's time create a new neuron that will contain somewhere between in this example, somewhere between 0 0.95 and 1.05 ICP. Basically, it is a non-deterministic process. So it's a bit random, depending on the ICP's price fluctuations, how much ICP you will get. But for convenience sake, you can think of one maturity equaling roughly one ICP, which slightly differs depending on when you spawn your neuron. A few other things you can do with your neuron is automatically stake new maturity or participate in the neurons fund. And the neurons fund is uh, something we will talk about in a later episode. This is now outside of uh, the scope of this episode. Maturity, as, as you can see, it also has two 
different parts. One is available maturity and the other is state. Available maturity is the one that if, if this reaches one, you can spawn the neuron. But stake maturity is something that counts towards your stake. So let's say if I have 10 ICP here and I have two stake maturity, then my voting power will calculate as if I had 12 ICP here on the top. So now that we have this one NNS neuron containing ICP, what else can we do with this? Uh, so let's say I copy this ID and I go to the dashboard, I can paste this ID here and I should be able to see my neuron. So here you can see that it has the one year dissolve delay. It gives you an estimate on your yearly reports. Again, the higher the dissolve delay, the larger this number is. And it says your expected daily maturity or daily voting rewards. Now, because I only have one ICP, it's a low enough number that it displays as zero. But let's say if I had a hundred or more ICP, they should show up as exactly how much voting rewards I'm expected to get. And now a little bit more about voting rewards. So let's say if I stake a hundred ICP for four years and I keep it locked, but then I start dissolving after two years, how much voting rewards will I have accrued in, in the six years that it's locked? And this is something that you would probably have to write a script or do some calculations on. Um, and that's why this comes in really handy. It's called the NNS Neuron Sandbox. It will be down in the description, the link for this. And here you can set up all the properties of the neuron that you want. So let's say I have 100 ICP and I'm at day zero. I'm going to set my dissolve delay for four years. Uh, four years is 365 times four. So that's 1460. Confirm. Now I have in this sandbox 100 ICP stake for four years. I can see my dissolve delay bonus and I can click start. And on the right side, you will see the maturity that you, you accrue over time. And now we are at one year and I said, I'm going to start dissolving at two years. And you see that the amount of voting power has decreased. And this is because I was accruing age bonus as my neuron was kept locked. But when I start dissolving, that age bonus goes down to zero. And because now I have my dissolve delay is getting lower and lower, I have uh, less voting power. And my annualized rewards are also smaller. Feel free to play around with different numbers depending on on what your situation is. Something else that is important to mention, I said that eight years is the maximum that your dissolve delay can be, but the minimum is six months. Be below six months, you can set the dissolve delay to, for one day, but below six months, the neuron cannot vote on proposals. And the reason for that is the NNS was designed such that the participants of the governance system should be incentivized to vote in favor of the inner computer's long-term uh, future. So the longer you commit to the ecosystem, the more say you should have in voting. And let's say hypothetically, I have a lot of ICP and I lock, lock this for one day. I vote against the long-term interest of the inner computer. And then I dissolve my ICP and I sell it on the market the day after. And this you cannot do if you have the six months barrier. So the six months minimum uh, dissolve delay before neuron can vote. And that is all I have for today. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.